Hey everyone, I'm Lisa Pickering and welcome to the 10 most fascinating people of Bermuda 2016. This season was all about the people's choice and thanks to your nominations, we've put together a list of 10 individuals who left you wanting to know more. Remember, the list is in no particular order, save for the final person who we will reveal as 2016's most fascinating person at Bermuda. What makes someone fascinating? This is the 10 most fascinating people of Bermuda 2016. Sponsored by One, Mod Blue Boutique and the Trades Women of Bermuda. Hosted by Lisa Pickering. From teenage woes to television throws, our next guest immersed himself in his studies in the world of video games to drown out the bullying he was suffering at school. A lot has changed in just over a year for 16-year-old television host Antoine Jones of Channel 82's In The Know. The Barclay student opened up to us about finding his voice and where it all started. This was the Friends of Hospice Rubber Duck Derby and I'd done a stand up. Hi, my name's Antoine Jones. <laughs> As you can imagine, it was very dull, very not stiff. very energetic. And every time somebody walked across, it was just like, like I just froze up like I was doing the mannequin challenge. <laughs> But as, as the day went when my producer was getting me, he was like, why, why are you freezing up? Like, come on, like, you know, it's, 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 it started to come natural. Were you hooked at that point in time or did you need some convincing to do it again? No, I was definitely hooked, I must say. I was definitely hooked, but it was just getting used to being in front of the camera, that, that training in front of the camera, which is what I had to get used to. But I was very excited to be doing it. And I bragged to all my friends that I was doing it. <laughs> Now, you have identified yourself as a shy kid, perhaps not now, but prior to your experiences. Uh, and you were bullied when you were younger as well. So how do you put yourself out there and get the confidence to go in front of the, the camera? Because that's daunting for anyone. So it was like primary school, I got bullied. Uh, I went on to middle school and things changed a bit. I was just more of the kid that was just there amongst everybody. And I was just doing my work, getting my work done. Um, and. I don't know, it's just like I kind of fell into this and it, it put me into the place where I needed to be and things just started coming together and people just started coming around and it gave me that confidence. Well, you have a lot of um, community support as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that feel to know that the community is behind you and wanting your success? It's so heartwarming to see something that started from literally just an idea of the teens not really having a voice to me being able to voice my opinions and everybody being behind me, not even just teens, adults come up to me. Now you were saying just about having a voice of the youth. Uh, what do you like to put on your platform? I know it's a lot of uh, sports and entertainment and things of that sort, but do you like to tackle any other big issues or would you like to tackle bigger issues? Definitely, moving in forward into 2017, I really would like to tackle some issues that are going on in Bermuda, not just for myself, but for other people out there, like SCARS is a very big organization that's doing something positive for Bermuda. And I get people that come up to me and they, they also have been through these issues or just simply want to know more about it. And of course, I've got to keep them in the know about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your job. Yes. Yeah. Do you ever get nervous? Because I know you've, you've interviewed everyone from America's Cup, politicians, uh, NFL players, musicians, the list goes on and on. And then as we were talking before, mm -hmm. you do a lot of man on the street. Uh, but for the more high profile people, do you get nervous? I have been nervous before and I do get nervous. I won't lie to you, when I was away at America's Cup, it was a big eye-opening experience. And to see these sailors all in the water and then they come in and I get to talk to them, it was crazy. But it wasn't just then that I've been nervous for it. Sometimes, to be honest with you, I've been nervous with just regular people. What is it like to experience that um, overseas? I mean, you're only 16 and you traveled already to host that, that segment. Um, do you not think that's a huge undertaking? It's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Just flying out there and getting into the airport at first and then getting to the actual event village, walking there. Like, you know when you're here and you walk into cup match and things like that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, wow, all these people. And the amount of people that was out that day was crazy. <laughs> it was like almost the whole Bermuda was there and it wasn't even a race day. It was a practice day. So it was a very eye-opening experience. Um, and to see like the kids and everything that was out there and the people, they came out with the dog, the whole family <laughs> picnic. And, yeah, everybody came and it was it was like it was like almost a bigger Bermuda in England. It was like I almost felt at home. Do you have a favorite team for America's Cup? I'll have to go with Artemis. Any reason why? <laughs> I just like Ian Percy to be honest with you and the whole team. They're they're very cool guys. Have there been any other memorable interviews that really stick with you? For a high profile person, uh, Maxi Priest and growing up listening to him and then just getting to interview him and meet him was like 
<laughs> surreal. I couldn't even wrap yeah. my head around it almost. It was crazy when I was sitting there talking to him. I was like zoned out the whole time because it was like I'm talking to Maxi <laughs> Priest right now. It was, it was a very interesting interview and I feel very privileged to get to meet him. Well, I mean, you have all these experiences, but at the same time, you're very grounded as well. I mean, you're on the honor roll, you're a prefect. Um, why is it such an important part of your career that you are also a good student? Well, like anybody would tell you, school is a very important part in your life. You know, school, you're in school for, I'm 16 now, you're in school for 18 years. And then if you go off to college, you might be in school till you're about 20, you know? So school is very important. But I've really been striving to get onto principal's list. Um, that's, that's been the hardest thing so far. I got so close last year. I got, I was, my average was at 89.29. Oh, wow. And it was a bit discouraging, but at the same time, it encouraged me to want to do better. But I feel that it's, it's, it's very important to be a good student because what you do in school also reflects what you're doing outside of school. Because if I'm joking around in school and not doing my work, teachers might not take me as serious as how I want them to take me. So that's, that's a big part of what I do. I, I take pride in that. I don't want to be labeled as mediocre. Do you consider yourself a role model? Definitely, and, and how I know this is because a lot of parents come up to me and they say, yeah, my son watches you. My, even my PE teacher also told me that, like, my son watches you, like, in the no events on Um it's, it's very encouraging to see the kids, they look up to me, and when kids come up to me, I like to tell them, like, of course, pay attention in school. I like to encourage the youth just to stay on the path and just do what's right and things will come to you. What about your peers? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you go to school with students that aren't attending classes or, or doing their work or getting into a bit of trouble in and out of school. Do you encourage them to kind of straighten out their ways? Definitely, and I do have, like, everybody speaks to me at school. I do have a lot of friends, and when people are slacking off, I like to tell them, do your work. It would be, I would love to see all my friends graduate with me at the same time yeah. that I do, 2018. <laughs> I don't want to see anybody left behind. I want everybody to graduate. And so we could all go around town beeping our horns <laughs> and our bikes and things like that. So I want everybody to graduate with me. So I just try to bring everybody along and encourage everybody. Don't forget to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on burnnews.com to find out who else made the list of the 10 most fascinating people of Bermuda 2016.